Hey everyone, and welcome to Leak Code Explained. Today we're tackling problem 498, diagonal traverse. It sounds simple enough, but that zigzag pattern can be a little tricky to implement. Don't worry, we'll break it down step by step. So here's the official problem. We're given a grid of numbers, which is called mat, and our job is to read out all the numbers, but in this very specific diagonal zigzag order. Let's visualize that path. You start at the top left corner, and you have to travel along these diagonal lines. The arrows on the diagram show the exact path we need to take through the grid. But the most important thing to notice is the constant direction change. The path goes up and to the right for a bit. Then it switches and goes down and to the left. Then back up and to the right, and so on. Capturing this zigzag logic is the real heart of the problem. Let's trace the example from the problem description. We start with the number 1. Our result begins with just 1, tasted. Next, we move up and to the right, collecting 2, then 4. Our wrist is now 1, 2, 4. Now it's time to switch. We head down and left, grabbing 7, 5, and 3. We add those to our list. Switch again. We go back up and right getting 6 and 8, and for the final move we switch one last time to get the 9. And that's our complete final order. Okay, so how can we translate this into code? There are a couple of really cool ways to think about this. The first method is about finding a hidden pattern in the grid structure. The second method is about creating a simulation that just walks the path we just traced with our finger. Let's start with the first idea, which the editorial calls diagonal iteration, the Kangles mattis. This approach is all about finding a property that all the cells on a single diagonal share. To do that, we need to look at their row and column numbers. If you look at the indices, you'll spot the pattern. For the element at row 0, column 0, the sum is 0. For the next diagonal, containing elements at 0, 1 and 1, 0, the sum of indices is always 1. And for the diagonal, with 3, 5 and 7, the sum of their indices is always 2. This is our key insight. This gives us a solid three-step plan. First, we'll go through the whole grid and group every number based on the sum of its row and column. Second, we need to handle the zigzag. It turns out that diagonals with an even index sum, like 0, 2 and so on, need their elements read in reverse order. So for those diagonals, we'll reverse the list of numbers we collected. Finally, we'll just stitch all these processed groups together in order to get our final result. All right, here's the Python code for this grouping approach. It might look a little dense at first, but it follows that exact plan we just made. Let's look at the first part. We set up a dictionary to store our groups. Then, we just loop through every single cell in the matrix. For each number we calculate its key, which is just its row, plus its column, and we add that number to the list associated with that key. By the end of these loops, we'll have everything neatly grouped by diagonal. Now for the second part. We create our final result list. We loop through all possible diagonal sums, from zero up to the maximum. Inside the loop, we check if the diagonal index, i, is an even number. If it is, that's our signal to reverse the little list of numbers we collected for that diagonal. Then, whether we reversed it or not, we add that entire list's contents to our final result, and that's it. Okay, on to our second method, simulation. This approach is more direct. Instead of clever grouping, we're just going to write code that mimics our finger tracing the path on the grid, We'll keep track of our current row and column, and which direction we're headed. The main challenge is figuring out the rules for turning when we hit a wall. These are the rules for turning. When we're moving up and to the right, if we hit the right wall first, our next move is to just step one spot down. If we hit the top wall first, we step one spot to the right. The logic is basically mirrored for when we're moving down and to the left. If we hit the bottom wall, we move right. If we hit the left wall, we move down. These rules will perfectly guide our simulation. Here is the code that implements that simulation logic. You can see it's basically one big loop that continues until we've visited every single cell. Inside this while loop, we first add the number at our current position to the result. Then comes the big block of if and else statements. This whole section is just implementing those boundary rules we just talked about. It checks which direction we're going, checks if we're at a boundary and then updates the row and column to the correct next position. Crucially, it also flips the direction variable when we make a turn. It's a bit more code, but it's a very direct simulation of the process. So which one is better? In terms of time, they're both the same. They have to visit every single cell in the grid, so the time complexity is big O of M times N. Where it gets interesting is space. The first approach, the grouping one, needs extra memory to store all those intermediate diagonal lists. 
this can take up to big O of M times N space. But the simulation approach is a real champ here. It only needs to keep track of the current row, column and direction, so its extra space is big O of 1, or constant. That makes it much more memory efficient. So let's recap. We saw two great ways to solve this. The first approach used a clever trick, grouping elements by the sum of their indices, which is a great pattern to remember. The second approach was a direct simulation, carefully handling the boundary conditions to trace the path. While both work perfectly, the simulation method wins on space efficiency. I hope that breakdown was helpful and made the problem clearer. If it did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more videos. If you have any questions or a different way you solved it, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next one.